The 2019 NFL Draft is three years into their careers, and a lot has transpired since then. There have been several front office personnel fired due in some part to this draft, among many other decisions that were made, but as you can see, the title of today's video is Grading Picks 33 through 48, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Some picks may be surprising, and some you may not realize either happened or just completely forgot about. And side note, the grades for second round picks are easier than first round picks due to less expectations, so with that preface out of the way, let's begin. And like always, we go in reverse order, and we'll be going from picks 48 to 33, so we are starting today's video with the same second round pick of center Eric McCoy. McCoy missed a few games in 2021, but has started in 44 of 49 possible games for New Orleans, and with how many good players there are in this team, like Alvin, Michael Thomas, Cameron Jordan, and plenty of others, Eric gets lost and is actually a very good player. He didn't allow a sack in 20. 2021 despite having over 700 snaps. A long-term interior offensive line starter is much, much easier said than done, and the Saints have that in Eric McCoy, an A-plus pick. This is definitely the lesser of the known Seattle second round picks from this draft and it's safety Marquise Blair, for reference the other is DK Metcalf. He played in 14 games his rookie season and showed some potential to be a role player for the next couple of years, Marquise Blair that is, but has played in 8 games over the past 2 years due to injury. His long term days in Seattle are probably in question, but the good news for him is, is he'll be just 25 this year and can rebound. This is always a slippery slope to grade because in theory the draft pick didn't work out, and from a football standpoint he has 49 tackles in 3 years and has played in 22 games. So it it would be an F, but it's obviously not Marquise's fault for back-to-back -back knee injuries that prematurely ended his second and third season. I hope he can get healthy, but right now it is incomplete. The Browns took a chance on a falling corner in Greedy Williams, and he's been solid when he's played, that is. And he missed all of 2020 due to an injury he suffered in training camp, and in a lot of ways, 2021 was a prove-it year for him. Greedy is a solid CB2, and I do believe that is his ceiling as a football player. Certainly not bad, and you do need players like this on your roster, and I hope he can stay healthy for the next few years and continue to play a part in the Browns secondary. For now, a C plus grade, though I think it can be much higher. Corner Joan Williams was selected by the Patriots, and this was in a lot of ways a height, weight, speed prospect going to the Pats to learn under defensive guru Bill Belichick that everyone couldn't wait to see how it panned out. Unfortunately, it never did, and in three years, Joan has one career start and has played in 36 of the 49 possible games. Second round expectations are less than first round expectations. But the Patriots did not hit with this and many other draft picks from this class. A D grade. Offensive lineman Elkton Jenkins is a classic Packers offensive line pick here, and I mean that in the best way possible. He is a stud when on the field, but unfortunately tore his ACL, which prematurely ended his 2021 season. Elkton had a hell of a 2020 year, and assuming he gets back to that level of play in 2022 that he had in 2020, well, the Packers have an offensive lineman other teams wish they had, and they drafted him in the second round. He's a beast. Period. A plus pick. Linebacker Jelani Tavai went to the Lions, and I'm not going to lie, when this pick was made in real time, I rolled my eyes and thought, same old Lions, and not surprisingly, former head coach Matt Patricia and former GM Bob Quinn were eventually fired, though to be clear, it was way more than just this decision. Tavai was way overdrafted, and I felt bad for him personally for that, because he wasn't even close to the 43rd best player in this draft. He was released, so to be clear, he wasn't even traded for a measly 7th round pick that we often see prior to his third season beginning, and this draft grade gets an F. The Broncos traded up to get back-to-back -back second round picks with the Cincinnati Bengals, and this was where quarterback Drew Locke was selected. This isn't an easy pick to grade, because there's been far worse quarterbacks than Drew taken earlier in other drafts, but Drew certainly isn't a Pro Bowl player and is not a member of the Broncos anymore, and there's a reason for that. The grade for this pick to me is take your choosing of anywhere from a D plus to a C minus area because Drew had a solid five game span in his rookie season where Broncos fans legitimately thought 
they had a franchise quarterback. As we know now, that wasn't the case with Drew Locke, that is, and three years later, this gets a D+. Offensive lineman Dalton Risner was picked prior to Locke and has started 47 games in three years. And Risner is a solid starting offensive lineman when healthy, and to be honest, I don't know how healthy he was in 2021 because his play at times was woeful last year and very concerning. And I don't think 2021 is fair to grade his career on because he flashed at times in 2019 and 2020, and it's hard to imagine a player falling off this much between year two and year three when he was already solid in his first two years. A B plus grade, but with a healthy 2022, I think it bumps up. Trayvon Mullen to the Las Vegas Raiders is an up, and this was an okay pick. Not great where you're excited he's on your team and you got a huge steal, but an okay pick. And this franchise, during the Mayock and Gruden era, made several bad picks, especially early, like Damon Arnett in the top 20 when he was borderline a top 100 player, and Cleland Farrell in the top 5. But this was good value at the time, as Mullen was a top 40 player, and he's flashed at times, but for the most part is average. The Raiders fan base is extremely diverse on Trayvon, where some thinks he's, you know, garbage, as they would say on Twitter, and others think he's underrated because of how many fans call him garbage, but this pick gets a B-. Sean Murphy Bunting of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was picked prior to Trayvon Mullen, and he has one less interception in the postseason than he does in the regular season, with three coming in the four-game 2020 Super Bowl run versus four in three full regular seasons. He's a rock-solid corner, and exactly what you're hoping for when you make this pick. Anything more from an expectation standpoint from a second-round pick, and to me you're being a little greedy. He will be a longtime starter for the Bucs and gets an A. Now, out of all of the great things the Bills front office has done over the past few years with GM Brandon Bean and head coach Sean McDermott and developing Josh Allen, this pick was not one of them. Tackle Cody Ford is entering 2022 in a fight for his NFL career and has played in 38 games and had a PFF grade of less than 50 last year. Translation, that's bad. I'd be very surprised if the Bills offer him a second contract and even a one-year deal in 2023 to prove it, and I think they'll let him walk without offering at the end of next season. A D-plus grade for Ford. Offensive tackle Greg Little from Ole Miss was the Panthers' second-round pick, and Gregory is now a member of the Miami Dolphins. In three years, he's played in 14 total games and started in just six, and could not stay healthy. He's been placed on injured reserve every year of his career for both the Panthers and the Dolphins, and was traded prior to his third season for a seventh-round pick. So I guess credit the Panthers for finding a trade partner when the Lions could not with Jelani Tavai, but this was an awful pick in F grade. Debo Samuel is a very unique player and a very good player, and with the year he had, you can't blame him for wanting to get paid. He has 21 career touchdowns and over 3,100 total yards to his name, and was a first-team All-Pro player in 2021. I hope the 49ers work something out here with Debo, because I think it would help out Trey Lance's development tremendously to have a player like Samuel with him, and three years later, not surprisingly, this gets an A+. Tackle Jawan Taylor was the Jags' second round pick, and this was a guy who fell big time in the draft. There were plenty of mocks where he went in the top 10 or 12 picks prior to the 2019 draft, and there's a reason why NFL GMs get paid the big bucks, because Jawan, well, has not panned out. He started 48 games over the past three years, but that also doesn't mean he's been good, as he had the second lowest run blocking grade of any lineman last year according to PFF. I give the Jags some credit for having a three-year starter from a second round pick, but that's all it accounts for. A C grade. Corner Rock Yassin was the Colts' second round pick, and this was a player that, not surprisingly like a lot of young corners do, and I'm talking on Rock's 2019 season specifically here, but a lot of young corners go through growing pains when they transition to the NFL. He was more than coming into his own this past year and is now a Raider. The Colts traded him for Unique Ngakwe, and grading this to me is difficult, and it's a good grade, but where does it end on the spectrum? Here's my thought process. A couple of years for 
for a starting corner in exchange for a 10 sack pass rusher per year. So a few years production at corner, and now you have a solid 27 year old pass rusher in a conference where you need pass rushing. And all for a second round pick, I'm giving it an A, and honestly I'm not mad if you want to say it's an A plus when you factor in everything. The first pick of the second round was Cardinals corner Byron Murphy, and what I can't stress enough about this pick and expectations for corners is how good he's been for Arizona. By no means has he been a future Hall of Fame 8-time Pro Bowl Patrick Peterson player, but he has more than held his own and is a long-term starter. He should be compensated soon and just had a big year in which he had 4 interceptions. This to me is the blueprint of what you strive for in a second round pick. Hell, several teams from this draft wish they took him in the first round if they knew he was going to be this good. An A plus for Murphy. Now guys, with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, as it would truly mean the world. We have a Justin Jefferson autographed jersey giveaway on Twitter, so the detail is in the description for that. And as always, until next time, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.